Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out Rhino OS. So let's get started. So this operating system has been on my radar for quite some time and I've been meaning to check it out. It's called Rhino OS and I'll leave a link down in the description below. Now what makes this special is that it is a rolling release, which means it acts like Arch Linux where you don't have any version numbers. It just keeps updating and updating till the latest package. Now it is based off Ubuntu dev build and what makes this a rolling release is the package manager that it ships called the Rhino PKG. So we're gonna be checking all that out and what this operating system looks like and everything. So here we are on the desktop. Now I do like the wallpaper, but it does remind me a little bit of Tor, like the onion and the purple, but I do really like purple. So I like the Dracula themes and everything. And so anything that dark theme with purple makes it look really nice. And this operating system does definitely have that feel to it. Now you do get this new search bar where you can search all your applications. Uh, you get a little application grid that looks just like this. If you have more applications, you can scroll left and right through this, uh, which is pretty nifty. Um, then you have your Firefox stable, file manager. Um, this is using Thunder. And we have XFCE terminal. Now it might look like GNOME, but this whole operating system is based off XFCE, which means it's super lightweight and it runs less cycles to run programs. So it actually feels pretty fast. Now I am testing this on my Zima board right over here. This is where I usually test all my operating systems. So it's not a virtual environment. It's a physical device that I'm testing everything on. So we're going to go into settings to see what we got. First, actually, I want to look at system resources. So let's go over to um, task manager. Where is this? Task manager over here. And it's very hard to tell from the color lighting, but you could see it using about 795 megabytes. I think first boot was like 750, which is pretty good for an operating system like this. And it runs pretty well. Now this is using uh, Intel Celeron N5105 and it's not the most powerful, but it gets the job done. And with that, it actually makes it feel pretty responsive. Uh, let's go over to settings. Let's uh, application grid and let's go over to settings. Well, I got to type all this. Let me see. Window manager, workspaces. I'm, I, I setting manager there you go so if you're familiar with F xfce this is how xfce setting manager looks like we have our about me and we have our appearances over here now they do use their own thing which is a themed version of xfce called unicorn and i like that they're using yuri um i think they're using purple dark that's how it makes it look like a dracula theme which i again really like uh using papyrus dark let's let's check this out while we're switching around so we got the Papyrus Dark, we got the Standard. Uh, do I have the Apply Settings? No, it should just change. Oh, it does change a little bit. Let's go to Style and change this. Let's just change this to Purple. So it's Light Deem with Purple, and you got the regular Purple Dark. Let's switch it to Light Purple, White Purple. So this way we could actually see the icons a little bit better. Switching over to Icons, we could use large icons like Ubuntu Style. The regular, then we got, this is the light one. Then we have the dark one. Let's use the light because we're switching the theme to light anyway. We have the font as sans regular. And then you have your regular settings button. And then you got a little bit of window scaling here. As far as display goes, they, I think they have um, high DP and low DP. Mm, yeah, this is the scale. Oh, okay, they do have 1.25 and 1.5 now for XFCE, which is really good for laptops with offset um, resolutions. Uh, my laptop has like a 2K resolution, so I usually need to use 1.5. It really limits how many operating systems I could use because not all of them support 1.5. All right, moving over to desktop, we have, let's check out the wallpapers. So we do have this onion wallpaper. I'm going to close this out. They have the standard XFCE wallpaper. Oh, they have this really cool one. What's this? Oh, this is XFCE. I've never seen this one. Looks really cool. They have the onion one or the uh, rhino one. And this is, I guess, another Rhino because I see a Rhino head over here, which I do like actually this wallpaper, pretty cool. And then you got this over here, another Rhino. Oh, this has a Rhino in the background too with the clouds or mountains. And then you got the moon. I'm guessing it's part of the Rhino pack, but I don't see the Rhino here. And then you got the standard Rhino. And then you got here and then another 
plain desktop. So I'm gonna stick with the standard desktop, which you can see over here. Head over to menus, then icons, and you can change all of that. Now they are using Plank for this little dock. So we can change the settings here. So I think this is right here, the settings, preferences. I generally like Plank. Um, I don't like it off to the side, but I do like it on the bottom. So you can switch this to the bottom. Uh, they have different themes, so you could stick with transparent, you could go with matte, you could go back to Rhino Plank, that's their style. I also like icon zoom, not dramatically, but I do like that I am highlighting something and I could tell that I'm highlighting that. So I do like icon zoom. If you like a bar, you could actually uh, do fill instead of, um, what do you call it, center. And it kind of like gives you that uh, feel. You got behaviors, IntelliHide, so if I got something full screen, it would hide it. Then you have Docklets, so if I want to look at, say, CPU monitor, it would tell me my CPU usage right over here. But generally, I don't use that. I just leave everything like stock over here. Um, they also in include a search, a search bar, so I could search for setting manager. Oh, this was much easier. I should have just used this. Setting manager over here, I could bring it back over here. You got the panels, window manager tweaks. Um, all right, so they have a few things included that's not standard in XFCE, including this window manager tweak, Kvantium. I'm guessing this has to do with some sort of transparency. So let's look at XFCE, yep, transparent terminal. There you go. Now, the heart of this whole operating system thing is the Rhino PKG. So let's try Rhino. PKG and install uh, VLC. So what this will do is actually gonna look through Flatpak, Snap, and App Images, and also Apt to search, oh, also uh, Packstall, um, to search for all your programs, and you could decide where you wanna install it from. If it does have it available in Packstall, it will actually pull that from there too. So let's say if I want to install something from Apt, and I'm gonna install just the VLC right over here. I'll put 21, and are you sure? Yes. And then it'll ask me for my password. And there we have it, we should be installing VLC. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Packstall, that's similar to what you would find on AUR for Arch Linux. So let's kind of pull that up. I'll go over to Google and Packstall. And Packstall, the AUR for Ubuntu. Now, I do like the fact that it does pull from AUR. I mean, it does pull from Paxtel, but you also got to keep in mind, similar to what you have with AUR, it is user-created installers for, your, for whatever you're trying to install. So if you trust the source, then go ahead and install it. But if it's something you're not, you don't trust, then uh, you, be careful about it because there are times where people can install malware through this process and you know invade the system. So. Yeah, just keep in mind, similar to AUR, um, you do have those vulnerabilities out. It does go through a whole system of checks to make sure that it is good for Paxtol, but there are instances that it does happen. So just keep that in mind. Now, it did install VLC, so it should pop up into my desktop. Let's see, VLC, MVP player. Oh, there you go, video lane right here. VLC media player. Yeah, installed just like it should. It actually opened up pretty quick and it does use Nyla for app install. So that's why you see this visualization. It's from Nyla. Nyla is a pretty good installer that I've used to use on Ubuntu. Let's try to search for another program. Um, Rhino PKG install GIMP. Let's take a look at GIMP. Now, one thing I don't like about this when I've been playing around with it is that it takes forever to search for stuff. It's not instant, so it does take a while. Uh, we do have everything in Flatpak. This is in apt. And then we have one snap. It still doesn't show anything that's coming from uh, Paxtol. Does Paxtol even have um, browse packages, GIMP? Let's see. Might not because it's not, yeah, it's not even worth going in. But let's see. All the browse packages, you do have one password, uh, any desk. Hey, let's give any desk a try. So. I'm not gonna install GIMP. I'm gonna control C, get out of that. And Rhino package, install, and over here I'm gonna install, what was I saying? Any desk. Again, it takes a bit. And it does have it only on pack install here. It doesn't have it on. Okay, I like that. I like that you could find this, 
not only on um, Flatpak or apt. So I'm guessing we would have to install, how do I know which one to debate? Because it's two. So there's any desk here and it's created by two guys. So how would I know which one to trust? See, those are the things that I run into when I'm installing something from AUR or even from Packstall. I don't know which one to choose. I'm gonna use zero because that sounds legitimate. Any desk dash bin. Do you want to edit? No, I don't want to edit. I'm just going to let it install. So it's going to download the tar file, I guess, install it and create that. It's running through apt. This is the first time I'm installing anything through pack install through on this operating system. So let's take a look. Do we have any of this? We do. Starts right up. It's actually pretty quick. Wow. I'm impressed. That worked out very well. Now, I did run into a few bugs in this operating system, namely the installer. So when you install this, it might it gets up to 99% and then your system hangs in a sense. Uh, if you do get past the 99%, you can hit reboot, but it gets stuck in the rebooting process. So there are bugs in this operating system, especially in the installer that I've experienced. I haven't used this operating system and the desktop mode long enough to see if there's any bugs in this. But if I was to witness a bug in the installer, um, they're bound to be maybe a bug or two in this uh, actual desktop operating system. So I wouldn't say that that wouldn't be a possibility. Um, just looking at their unicorn theme. So they do have themes. They have the regular XXD da dashboard. They have the XF dashboard wine. That looks pretty cool. XF dashboard itself. Okay. There's another thing that they have in here called the uh, desktop switcher, which I do like. Again, it reminds me of GNOME, but it's like a scaled down version of like uh, GNOME 2.0 and 3.0. It's like right in between. I do like the styling of it. And XFCE is super lightweight, so you'll be able to use this on uh, multiple PCs with different types of hardware. Now, to update your system, I think we have to do Rhino, and I think it's update. Oh, Rhino, PKG, update. Uh, are you sure you want to update all packages? Yes. Might as well, this is the rolling release package. I'm guessing you could set up a script in a way where it will automatically do that every time you boot up. So it will keep everything fresh and update. But also keep in mind you are in Ubuntu development. There are chances that there's a package that might be broken because you are on the cutting edge. So there are chances. All right, I'm gonna let this update and talk about this operating system for a little bit. So it is on a development branch. Um, I wouldn't run this as a daily driver. If you're planning to play around with it to see how the rolling releases work or maybe wait another five or six months until it gets more stable. But for now, I wouldn't replace my desktop with it because there are a few bugs I'm, I'm bound to run into because if I ran into some bugs in the installer, there's possibility that there's bugs in this as well. The Rhino PKG runs really good. It does have, it does take its little bit of time. It's not super quick to search through all the repositories. So you got a flat pack and snap and, um, uh, pack stall so it does take its time to run through everything to find the package that you need so it's not super instant I'm pretty sure they'll be able to fine-tune that later down the road to make it faster but for now it's alright it works the desktop it's, uh, itself I really like the purple and dark I'm just a sucker for it so I like Dracula themes so I'm a sucker for this type of styling so 7 out of 10 I give that I do really like the desktop I like that it is XFCE and it is very familiar to me because I, I'm used to using GNOME so that is it for me. Those are my points about it. If you guys are interested in checking it out, again, the links will be down in the description below. And if you guys have any operating systems you want me to check out, let me know down in the comments or hit me up on Discord. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.